Hey there, you're looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. With a renewed sense of purpose, Mark and Tina left the library, ready to take the first step into an uncertain future. But they took that step side by side, united and unbowed. Mark and Tina stood outside the nondescript building, double-checking the address the self-proclaimed shift master had given them. The street was quiet, the setting sun casting long shadows across the pavement. You sure this is the place? Mark asked, eyeing the weathered door skeptically. Doesn't exactly scream mystical body swap expert. Tina shrugged, squaring her shoulders. Guess there's only one way to find out. She stepped forward and knocked firmly, the sound echoing in the stillness. For a long moment, there was nothing. Then the door creaked open, revealing a dimly lit hallway. Enter, seekers of truth. A deep voice intoned from within. Mark and Tina exchanged a glance. Here goes nothing, Mark muttered, and together they stepped across the threshold. The door swung shut behind them with an ominous thud. The hallway was narrow, the walls lined with bookshelves stuffed with ancient-looking tomes and strange artifacts. At the end of the hall, a figure emerged from the shadows. Welcome, he said, his voice rich and resonant. I am the one you seek. As he stepped into the light, Mark couldn't help but stare. The man was tall and imposing, dressed in flowing robes of deep purple. His beard was long and white, his eyes piercing and intense. He looked, in short, exactly like a wizard. I am honored that you have sought my counsel, the shift master said, gesturing for them to follow him. Please come in, we have much to discuss. He led them into a small, cluttered room, every surface piled high with books and scrolls and strange, arcane objects. In the center of the room stood a large, ornate mirror, its surface shimmering with an otherworldly light. Tea? The shift master offered, gesturing to a teapot that was somehow already steaming. I find it helps to clear the mind and open the soul. Um, no thanks, Mark said, too on edge to even think about drinking anything. I'd rather just get straight to the point. Can you help me or not? The shift master regarded him thoughtfully, stroking his beard. Impatience is the enemy of enlightenment, young Mark. But I understand your eagerness. You have undergone a profound transformation, one that has shaken the very foundations of your identity. Mark gaped at him. How did you... I never told you my name. The wizard waved a dismissive hand. Names are but labels, easily discerned by one attuned to the deeper currents of the universe. But let us focus on the matter at hand. You wish to return to your original form, yes? Yes, Mark said fervently. More than anything. This body, this life, it's not mine. I don't belong here. The shift master hummed thoughtfully. Belongingness is a tricky concept. Are we defined by our physical shells? Or by something more intangible, more essential to our being? He stepped closer to Mark, his gaze intense. Tell me, in your time inhabiting this new form, have you not experienced moments of connection? Of insight into another's perspective? Unbidden, Mark's thoughts flashed to Tina. The way she'd opened up to him, shared her struggles and her strength. The way they'd worked together, supported each other through this impossible situation. I... I guess so, he admitted. But that doesn't change the fact that this isn't my life. I have to go back. I have to make things right. The shift master nodded slowly. Perhaps. Or perhaps this is an opportunity, a chance to expand your understanding of yourself and others, to grow in ways you never imagined. He gestured to the mirror, its surface swirling with mist. This is the mirror of souls. It reflects not our outward appearance, but the truth of our inner being. Gaze into its depths, and you may find the answers you seek. Hesitantly, Mark approached the mirror. His borrowed face stared back at him, the features both familiar and alien. As he watched, the image began to shift and change, 
morphing into a kaleidoscope of colors and shapes. He saw himself as he had been, going through the motions of his old life. Work, home, the endless cycle of the everyday. But something was missing, some vital spark of connection and purpose. Then the image changed again, and he saw himself as he was now, in Tina's apartment, laughing with her over takeout, in the library, heads bent together over ancient texts, in the burger barn, trading quips and eye rolls over the fryer. He looked happy, engaged, like he was part of something bigger than himself, something that mattered. The realization hit him like a thunderbolt. This experience, as bizarre and unsettling as it had been, had woken him up, shaken him out of his complacent little bubble and forced him to really engage with the world, with other people. Slowly, he turned away from the mirror. Tina was watching him, her expression a mix of concern and curiosity. Well, she asked softly, what did you see? Mark swallowed hard, his thoughts whirling. I saw possibility, he said at last. A different way of being in the world. One that's messy and complicated and confusing as hell, but also real, vital. He looked to the shift master, stealing himself. Can you change me back? Return me to my old body, my old life? The wizard regarded him solemnly. I can, he said. The power to restore your original form lies within my grasp. But the question remains, is that what you truly want? What you truly need? Mark closed his eyes, his heart racing. Part of him yearned for the familiarity of his old existence, the safe predictability of it all. But another part, a part that had lain dormant for so long, craved something more, something deeper. He thought of Tina, of the bond they'd forged through this trial by fire, of the way she made him feel seen, understood, valued. Like he mattered, not just as an employee or a classmate, but as a person. Could he really just walk away from that? Go back to his isolated little world and pretend none of this had ever happened? I, I don't know, he whispered. The shift master nodded as if he'd expected this answer. Uncertainty is the beginning of wisdom, he said, and the path of growth is rarely a straight line. He waved his hand and the mirror's surface went blank, just a normal reflection once more. I will leave you to your contemplation, he said. But know this, the choice is yours and yours alone. Do not let fear guide your decision. Listen to your heart, your true self. It will not lead you astray. With that, he turned and swept out of the room, his robes swishing behind him. Mark stared after him, his mind a whirl. Then he turned to Tina, taking a deep, shaky breath. Tina, I... I don't know what to do, he confessed. This is all so much bigger than me, than anything I ever imagined. Tina took his hand, her palm warm and reassuring against his. I know, she said softly. And I can't tell you what the right answer is. But I can tell you this. Whatever you decide, I'm here. I'm with you. You're not alone in this. Tears pricked at the back of Mark's eyes. How long had it been since he'd heard those words? Since he'd felt that kind of unconditional support? Too long, maybe forever. He squeezed her hand, drawing strength from her steadiness. Thank you, he whispered, for everything. Together, they left the wizard's sanctum, stepping out into the cool night air. The world looked different now, sharper and more vivid, full of potential, full of change. Over the next few days, Mark wrestled with the decision before him. He went through the motions of his borrowed life, but his mind was far away, turning over the shift master's words again and again. He thought about his old existence, the safe, predictable rhythm of it, the classes, the shifts at Burger Barn, the quiet evenings alone in his apartment. It had been comfortable in its way, easy. But it had also been lonely, stagnant. He'd been going through the motions, never really connecting, never really living. And then he thought about this new life, this new perspective. 
The challenges, the uncertainties, the constant sense of being off balance. It was terrifying in a lot of ways, but it was also exhilarating, eye-opening. For the first time in a long time, he felt awake, engaged, like he was part of something bigger than himself. Slowly, almost reluctantly, a realization began to take shape in his mind. As much as he longed for the familiarity of his old body, his old identity, he wasn't sure he could go back to his old way of being. Not after everything he'd experienced, everything he'd learned. He thought of Tina, of the unlikely bond they'd forged. She'd seen him at his most vulnerable, his most confused, and instead of turning away, she'd stepped closer, offered her strength, her support, her friendship. Could he really just walk away from that? Pretend none of it had ever happened? The more he pondered, the more he realized he didn't want to. Scary as it was, uncharted as the path ahead might be, he wanted to see where this new life might lead, who he might become, in this skin that was not his own, but was slowly, day by day, beginning to feel less foreign, less like a costume and more like a chrysalis, a cocoon from which he was emerging, transformed. He met with Tina, trying to put his jumbled thoughts into words. She listened intently, her eyes soft with understanding. I get it, she said when he'd finished. Believe me, I do. Change is scary as hell, especially when it's not a change you chose. She reached out, taking his hand. But sometimes the things that shake us up the most, the things that throw our whole world off kilter, those are the things that help us grow, help us become who we're meant to be. Mark swallowed hard, emotion welling in his throat. You really believe that? I do, Tina said firmly. And for what it's worth. I like this version of you, Mark. Not because of the packaging, but because of what's underneath. The person you're letting yourself be. Tears blurred Mark's vision. He blinked them away, a shaky laugh escaping him. I like this version of me too, he admitted, even if I'm still getting used to her. Tina grinned. Well, I'm here to help with that, every step of the way. Together, they made their way back to the shift master's sanctum. He greeted them with a knowing smile as if he'd anticipated the outcome all along. You have made your choice, he said. It wasn't a question. Mark nodded, his heart pounding, but his voice steady. I have, he said. I'm staying, staying like this. He gestured to his body, the body that had once seemed so alien but now felt, if not quite like home, then at least like a place he could learn to call home. With time, with patience, with the support of those who cared for him. The shift master inclined his head, a gesture of respect. The path of transformation is not an easy one, he said, but it is a path of great courage and great potential. I have no doubt you will walk it well. He reached out, placing a hand on Mark's shoulder. Go forth with an open heart, he said. Embrace the journey ahead and know that you do not walk it alone. With those parting words, he stepped back, fading into the shadows. Mark and Tina looked at each other, a wealth of understanding passing between them. Then, hand in hand, they walked out into the bright, beckoning world, ready to face whatever came next, together. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.